Okay, so we have a, uh, an Excel spreadsheet, as you can see on your screen, and um, I also have a number of different uh, sheets based on the same one, so they're basically the same thing with some different figures on them. And I'm going to show you that uh, many times we have to do repetitive actions that may be time consuming, and if you are going to be doing the same repetitive action many times, um, it might be worth your while to create a macro which takes all of those steps, the keyboard uh, uh, clicks that you make and the mouse movements that you make and records them all. So it's kind of like doing a tape recording of something that you're uh, uh, talking about and then playing it back, except this is playing back your keystrokes and so forth. So in order to create, uh, I'm going to postulate the first thing we're going to do is create a simple macro that sets up a printer uh, format. So if I were to say that I, I wanted to print this and I were to go to uh, my print preview and print, you'd see that it's, it's still a standard portrait look and it would take um, another sheet to do this. So that things don't fit on the same sheet and this would not be a, a nice way to print out these uh, sheets. So I'm going to set up a macro that will uh, change the printer look, the landscape and the margins and so forth and make it a little bit easier and then show you how you can replay it on some of these other sheets that have the same setup. So first, how do we cr start creating a macro? Okay, the most obvious way is to go to the view menu and all the way on the right, there's a macros group. And when you click on macros and you want to record a macro, we're going to say record. And it turns on the record. And first, you have to name the macro. And I'm just going to call it print setup. You just have to make sure that you don't use any spaces. And most punctuation marks are not allowed. So just run through uh, your name without leaving any other spaces. If you want to create a shortcut key to access the macro afterwards, you can. So I'm going to use a Q. So you can see it's Control Shift Q. Uh, now where to store the macro? In general, if you're creating a macro, these are your three choices. If you're creating a macro that you're going to be using with multiple files, in other words, it's appropriate to do this with multiple files, you would want to save that macro in your personal macro workbook because that would mean that the macro is in memory and available for use every time you start up Excel. If you are creating a macro that is only for this particular workbook, you would save it in this workbook. Uh, for some people, because the personal macro workbook is a hidden workbook and it's rather difficult to get to if you want to modify it, they might create what, a new workbook and they might call it macros and then you'd simply need to open that workbook called macros before you could access any of the macros. So for ease of use in my situation, I'm just going to save the macros in this workbook. And if I want to describe it like landscape, centered, uh, let's say I wanted to do header, I can describe what this uh, macro does since I might have more than one print setup, uh, you know, printer setup uh, for different size paper or for different orientation, etc. So when I click OK, I am in a recording mode and everything I do here is recorded. So I'm going to go to my uh, print preview because here gives me the opportunity to change some of these settings, for instance, from portrait to landscape. And you can see that right away everything is fitting, but I don't like the spacing here. So I'm going to go down to my margins and say I want to customize them. And I'm just going to increase the top margin to one and a half inches, and I'm going to tell it uh, to center horizontally on the page. And when I say OK, that does look rather nice, and it's only all on one page at this point. So I'm going to close out of the uh, macro, I'm going to close out of the print preview, and then I'm going to say end the record. So I could go to my macros and I could say stop recording. All right, so that macro has been set. Now, of course, this uh, sheet, the summary sheet that I was on, is already set up to print that way. But if I go to one of the others, like quarter one, and I say what's my print preview, it's set up to print the way it was originally. And so if I want to run the macro, I can go to macro 
And I could say view macros, there's only one right now, but I could have multiple ones. And I could say run it. And although it doesn't look different on this screen, when I go to the print preview, you can see that it applied that macro. Okay. And by the same token, since I create, I'll go to a next sheet, this is quarter two, which is laid out the same way. And if I do, do control shift and Q, it should apply the same macro because that was a shortcut key. Of course, you need to be careful with shortcut keys because many of them are already reserved for certain functions and you don't like to overwrite them. So uh, I personally, if I was creating a lot of macros, probably wouldn't create shortcut keys. Um, first of all, you have to remember them, but I'll show you some other ways other than uh, having to go through um, the macros tab on the menu. And you could do other things in here. You could add headers. You could add all sorts of other print setups as part of this. So that's one of the um, idea for doing that. Okay, uh, I'm going to uh, use another Excel spreadsheet, also with a couple of different sheets, so I can show you once we create uh, our macro how it applies to different things. Now, in addition to going to the view and going to the macros and saying run a macro, on your uh, status bar on the bottom where you have your, uh, your uh, zoom and your different views and so forth, there, if you right click on that status bar, there are a number of things you can turn on or off, and one of them says macro recording. So more, normally, that's what you're looking at here. Normally, if I turn that off, you're not going to see that. But if I turn that on, I can use that to start a macro recording. So if I simply say, OK, I click on that, and then I want to give the macro a name, and I'm going to call this sheet format because I'm doing some formatting with it. And again, I could create a shortcut key, but I'm not going to. I could store it in my personal macro workbook. That would be the default, but I'm just doing it in this workbook because I don't want to change the uh, personal macro workbook. And I could describe whatever it is I am using this macro for. So I'm just going to say OK, and it's now in a record mode. And that's what, and, and I can just click on that button. See, it says it's currently recording. And if I click on it, it stops the record. So I'm going to, um, for instance, go to the, where my A1, where my header is, and I'm going to do some formatting here. So I'm going to change this to maybe 24 points, and I'm going to say, okay, I want to make it uh, dark blue, and um, let's say I want to change the typeface to something else, just, just so it's an obvious difference, whatever. And let's say I want to take uh, these items and I want to bold them and italicize them. And I want to take these headings and I want to bold them. And then I'm going to go to the numbers uh, and I'm going to apply a dollar format, currency format, but take out the pennies. And that's, and then I'm just going to click off that. And I'm going to then go to my little button that says a macro is recording. Click this to stop the record. So that's my macro. So now I'll go to the next sheet, which is laid out very similarly. And I can go to my macro and say, run, you know, start the macro. But I could also use a keyboard shortcut, Alt and F8. Uh, there we go, Alt F8, which lists for me the different macros. And so I'm going to go to the sheet format, and I can either double click on it or click once and say run. And here it ran the macro on the next sheet. So I'm going to go to the next one and do Alt F8. And this time I'm just going to double click on it, and it runs. So many, many steps that you can create as long as they're standard. These are all being uh, recorded by Excel, by Microsoft in Visual Basic, <clears throat> excuse me, Visual Basic, which is the coding, uh, the language that it writes the macros in. If you need macros that are a lot more complicated, that get to decision trees and you have to pick one or the other and so forth, then you need to write the macro in Visual Basic. And learning Visual Basic is learning the computer code and it's quite uh, 
you know, it's not something you can learn in a half hour uh, uh, video. <clears throat> it takes, uh, you know, a couple of days of classes to learn how to do that. But just for um, argument's sake, we can show you if I go to this sheet format and I say I want to edit the macro, it will open up the coding eventually. Here we go. This is a module that opens up and you can see this is all the code. I can make this larger. This is all the code. And certainly if you're not familiar with what the coding does, it might be difficult um, uh, to correct things, but certain things are very easy, like the size 24. If you decide that's too big and I just want to make it 20, you can change that. And then if I, and for instance, if you leave out, uh, you know, if you put in, in, you're putting in an address and you put an incorrect number in, or you put an incorrect phone number in, that would be an easy thing to correct. So if you do that and you just X out of this, it automatically changes that. So if I now do, um, Alt F8, and I run the sheet format again, you should see the uh, A1 heading get smaller. Let's see, it's hard to see. No, it didn't. That's interesting. <laughs> what happened? <clears throat> well, somehow I didn't save the change I made, so. <clears throat> We won't worry about that, but typically when you close it, it saves the change right away. Okay, so um, here's another way to access a macro. Uh, I'll go to this summary sheet so we have another one <coughs> to work with. And um, you can also put a macro on your quick access toolbar. Instead of having to go to the view, macros, run macro, or alt F8, you can do, if there's a one or two or three macros you use all the time, you can go to your uh, quick access toolbar and go to more commands. And here, instead of looking at popular commands, you can say macros. And so here's the sheet 3D format macro, and here's the sheet format macro. Whoops, I put it on there twice. Once is enough. And uh, it's, it's, and if I say OK, this is now on my quick access toolbar. And if I do that, you see how it worked to format it. This was the print macro, so it's not probably going to work uh, on here. <clears throat> and if I wanted to have this uh, look a little bit, you know, have an icon that was more identifiable to me, I could go back to my more commands. And I could select one of these, like sheet format, and I could say I want to modify, and I can pick any kind of icon that would, to me, indicate uh, what it does or a color or whatever. And so maybe I'll pick this, whatever, and I say OK, and that becomes the new symbol for that. So that's another way to work with macros and to access them. Okay, um, I want to show you something else. And for this, I'm going to use one more spreadsheet. And again, it has multiple sheets, so I can create the macro on one and then show you how it works on others. And um, <clears throat> what we've been doing so far with macros is the first thing in the macro is to indicate where you want to put your cursor when you run it. So we wanted to go to A1 to change the uh, size and look of the heading, for instance. And then we wanted to go and select the labels to do something to them. And so that was part of the uh, instruction in the macro. But sometimes you want the macro to be flexible enough to run just where your cursor is and not to go to A1 or to go to D3 or whatever. So in that case, <clears throat> you might go to the macros uh, choice in view all the way on the right and you would tell it to use a relative reference so just like when we and if i click on that now you see how that i don't know if you can see it but this is highlighted now 
So it's in a relative reference mode. So it's kind of like the difference between when you uh, create a sum formula going across a bunch of a, a, a bunch of columns, and then you uh, copy that formula down. It does a relative, so it copies the formula adding up uh, all across in each cell that you copy it to. Well, that's what a relative macro does. So we're going to create a macro that just puts in a name and address for a uh, company, and then we're going to see that we can use that in a variety of places. So I'm going to turn on the macro record, and I'm using the little button on all the way on the left of my status bar. So now I need to uh, give it a name. So I'm just going to say co-name add for company name and address. And again, I'm just saving it in this workbook, and I could put a description, but I'm not going to bother. And I'm going to say, OK, so now it's recording. And it tells me here, macro is currently recording. <clears throat> so I'm in A1. And I'm going to go to home. And I'm going to make this larger, maybe 18 point, maybe bold, um, maybe a different color. And I'm going to say uh, Acme uh, sales team or something, whatever. And then when I enter that, uh, I'm going to do another larger color and i'm going to say 445 wilson boulevard and again i'm going to tell it here and i'll say um i'm just making up an address here canton ohio blah 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 blah, blah. okay and if i wanted to add you know, phone number and so forth, I could do that. But let's say that's enough. And so I'm going to stop the record. Okay, so the thing that I did different here was I turned on the relative so that if I was uh, wanted to put that name and address somewhere else, such as here, and I went to Alt F8 <clears throat> and I turned uh, and I ran this code name and address, you see how it does it right there. So if I go to a different sheet and I decide I want to put the company name and address here instead of in C instead of in A, I can do uh, Control F8 and I can say run it and it does it there. So because I created it as a relative, use relative reference, I can apply that macro wherever my cursor is, it will run it. It's not looking to go to a specific cell in order to run. So I'm going to turn off the relevance so that it's not turned on, because the next time I create a macro, I probably would not want it as a relative. The uh, standard uh, is probably more commonly that you want to give it an instruction of where to go. Now, in something like the printer, uh, uh, the print setup macro that I created, it wouldn't matter whether relative was on or not because you're going into print preview and you're changing features in print preview. So it wouldn't really matter with where the cursor was uh, and what cell the cursor was. Okay, just to do another um, interesting macro, give you another example, if I wanted to run a macro and I would call it um, column uh, format, let's just say, and I say, okay, I'm saving in this workbook. I'm not bothering it with a description. If I select across here and I say here, I want it bold. I want it a little bigger and I want to angle it like this. And maybe I then want to put borders on it like that. And I want to stop the record. All right, so just, you know, so if I go to an, another sheet and I say, um, I use the F8 shortcut and I go to the column format and I run it, it does the same thing. So you can see how much time can be saved by setting up macros of, for things that you do repetitively. And um, I also want to point out uh, again, we were saving, I was saving things for my own purposes. If I was recording a macro, I was saving them in just the current workbook. And the reason when we went in to look at the macros, 
you are seeing all of the ones that I've created is because I left those workbooks open, okay? So if I were to close the office supplies one and not save it, and if I were to close the uh, 3D formula one, okay, and now I go to macros and I say view macros, it only has the one the two that I created in this workbook because this is the only one open. Whereas if you saved your macros in your uh, in your whoops no 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 I wanted to show you something. If you saved your macros in your personal macro workbook then that workbook would always be open whenever you went into Excel, although it's invisible, it's not one that you could just go and say, I want to open it up and see what's inside. Uh, but it would always be open, it would always be in memory, and you would have access to all of those macros that were saved in the personal macro workbook. Okay, so one more item I want to show you before we end the webinar, and that is in addition to creating uh, buttons on your quick access toolbar for these macros, you could also create a whole new tab that says macros. Uh, if, if you go to the uh, options, here we were in the quick access toolbar options before, but we could go to customize ribbon, and you could go over here and say, I wanna create a new tab, and I want to call that new tab, I'm renaming it macros or my macros or whatever, okay? And then you have to have a group in a tab. You cannot just put items on the ribbon without being in a group. So it says new group and I'm going to rename that and call it my macros, my max, <laughs> or macros, I guess, <laughs> okay? And then on to uh, that, group, I can say I want to see instead of popular commands, macro commands, and I want to do add this one, column format, and the name and address one. And I can certainly um, format those uh, to, to have a, to be a little bit different. Of course, I'm going to say OK. So now I have a macros tab and I can move that tab wherever I want. And then if I do this, uh, you see that it runs that. And if I do this one, it runs that. So those are available. And um, I should be able to customize yeah, if I select them here, hmm, I should be able to customize them and put different icons on them, but I'm not seeing that right now. New tab, new group. So maybe I had to do that before, uh, before I put them on my own. Uh, in a, in a new menu choice. Now, just like that, if you had those uh, special macro menu and you were using it, and then now you don't need it anymore for the, until the end of the next quarter or something, you're not going to use those macros, you could uncheck that. And when you say OK, it's no longer there. So you can check uh, what, you can control what tabs are showing. Uh, and if you go to options, and customize ribbon, you could also, if I wanted it showing, but I wanted it in a different location, see how I'm using my up choice to modify where my macros choice is, my macros tab is. So I can move those around as well. And I can also, uh, change them in terms of turning it off or in terms of deleting what's on there as well. So I can say remove and remove and remove and remove. And now I no longer have a macro. I still have the macros, but I don't have the tab. I removed it 
uh, that showed the macros. So that's a little bit of a uh, instructional demonstration on how you can create macros. And you can also, as I mentioned at the beginning, create macros in very much the same way, for instance, in Microsoft Word, which comes in handy also. And uh, hopefully that will um, be uh, a good enough start for you to go and experiment with your own. So uh, hopefully if anyone has any questions, um, I'm going to open up. Okay, so I removed those macros, but okay, if you don't want the macro anymore, I could go to the view tab, I could go to macros, view the macros, and here I can delete them, delete that macro. So you'd view your macros, and then you'd select the one you want to get rid of, and then you delete it. Okay, so thanks for that question. And if there's anything else, let me know. And otherwise, I'm going to say uh, goodbye for now. And we can uh, reconvene again for another webinar in the future. Thank you.